Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Salar Khan YouTube channel where today we start the new topic of what? Of the current mirror circuits. Another application of the BJT, right? This might be a little longer video, but I will try not to make it boring. Current mirror, as the name suggests, a current at one part of the circuit would be the mirror image of another part, of a current in another part of the circuit, right? Or you could say the output current would be equal to the input current, right? Yes, the book has given it uh, the definition that this is a DC network in which the current in one part of the circuit is controlled by a current in another part of the circuit, right? So again, you could say output input output and input current so you could say that the output current would be equal to the input current right yes sir so just let us develop the idea let us develop the idea of how of how this would happen so let's say you've got this input current this is an input current through what to a current mirror circuit to a current mirror circuit and this is if the output current so this circuit would do what the output current would be equal to the input current or if this is the source current passed through the current mirror circuit the sink so the sink current would be equal to the source current we are developing an idea basically of how this could happen of how this could happen so let's say let's say I, I just take a transistor let's say I just take an NPN transistor a simple NPN transistor let's say a current is coming let's say a current is coming and I am naming it as I reference your book has named it as an I control so a control current or a reference current whatever it may be let this is coming and and this is what this is the collector terminal yes and okay this is the emitter terminal which is grounded so what do you do is you just short circuit the, the the base and the emitter the base and the collector so the base and the collector is shorted that is what that vb becomes equal to vc so if vb becomes equal to vc this means that vbc is equal to zero volts so you have finished out one junction of the npn transistor you now only have a single junction that is the base emitter junction right yes so if this is the case what would you have vcb is zero volts as vb is equal to vc so this this sort of a transistor this sort of a transistor configuration is known as diode connected transistor this sort of a transistor configuration is diode connected transistor and i, I and i've already told you about this vjt is a diode right so this is a diode connected transistor now what can you have is if you assume the beta value to be infinitely large if you say say that the beta value is infinite infinitely large what would you have what would you have this would imply that the base current would be the base current would be zero and if the base current is zero the collector current would be equal to the emitter current and you know how I'm writing this. Yeah, you know the basic definitions for beta. I see if one IB or whatever that is. So if one is zero, the other is infinite. The collector uh, emitter current, which is the sum of the base and collector current would be equal to the collector current. Is that fine till here? It is, right? Yes. Now, the current equation of a forward bias diode. So the IE is the current through a forward bias diode, right? So you could say that this is equal to IE. So the equation is what? It's I naught exponential of, let me write it from here, VBE divided by VT. VBE divided by VT. VT is the thermal voltage. VBE is this voltage. Plus to minus VBE. This is the forward bias voltage across a diode. I naught is what? It's the reverse saturation current. And previously, I may have represented it by an IS. The, the, it doesn't matter it doesn't matter isn't it like this and i've already told you the value of vt right vt value i've already told you but if i write a value in in, in, in over here so t divided by 11600 would be the value or if the t is in degree kelvins okay if this t is in kelvins previously that was i believe a 2.6 millivolt and, and that I, I i told you on the basis of what on the basis of a degree centigrade so this is the thing that you know very well now if you see if you see so the ie ie is this current which is the which is the same as the collector current which is the same as the reference or the control current if you see so ie 
is the same as the collector current IC, which is the same as the reference current IE. Isn't it like this? Why? Because the base current, we are assuming it to be zero because of the very infinitely high value of beta. You can put down the values. So I reference would be what? I reference, I reference would be this thing now. I reference would be I naught eta VBE upon VT. Let's say I consider this to be a VBE1 because I also have to make one other. So VBE1. Now if I say, so I could have an I naught, uh, I reference upon I naught. I reference upon I naught would be exponential of VBE1 upon VT. Isn't it like this? Now if I take the natural log on both sides, if I take the natural log on both sides, so I would have what that ln of I reference upon I naught, this would come out to be, uh, uh, so the exponential and the, uh, and, the, uh, and the natural log are the inverse of each other. So I would have a VBE1 upon VT and isn't it like this? It is. So BBE1 comes out to be, VBE1 comes out to be what? Uh, uh, VT times natural log of, natural log of what? I reference upon I naught. I reference is the input current, I naught is the, uh, where have we, I naught is the, the reverse saturation current and let me name it as equation number one. Is that fine? Till here, VBE1, value of VBE1. Now again, if you have, if you have again, let's say that we have a simple NPN transistor. This was a base to emitter shorted. Now we don't have a base to emitter shorting. We only have a simple NPN transistor. If let's say this is the current IE, this is the collector current IC, and this is the base current IB. We've not connected a source over here that would be present of course a current sources may be a voltage source whatever the proper biasing would be present we are not interested in that for now right so now in this case what do you have let's say this collector current I name it as an I output current so this IC is equal to I output current is equal to IE is what this IC is equal to I output current is equal to the emitter current again and which is again the forward biased current. So I would say I naught reverse saturation current exponential of VBE2 this time upon VT. So if this is my plus to minus VBE to a forward biased current, if again my beta, uh, my, my IB current is so small, IB is approximately equal to zero volts. Why? Because of the beta approximating an infinite value. Is that fine till here? It is. So in a similar fashion, in the similar fashion, your VBE2 would come out to be what? VBE2 would come out to be uh, VT ln of I, I, I what? I out upon I naught. I out upon I naught. I out upon I naught. Is that clear? Let me name this as an equation number two. Is that fine? Now, if I say, if I say that VBE1 is equal to VBE2, if I say that your VBE1 is equal to VBE2, what would be the case? What would be the case you could have? You would say that Vt ln of I reference upon I naught. If somehow, if somehow I make them equal, somehow I make them equal, now I will get to the basic construction. But this is if somehow I say that theoretically Vb1 is equal to Vb2, then this would be the case Vt ln of I out upon I naught. So have a look. Vt would cancel out Vt, right? Divide, of course. And then what you would have that the ln ln, you would take the NT log on both sides. So ln ln would get out. Then you would have I naught I naught multiplied on both sides. So I naught I naught. So have a look. If Vb1 is equal to Vbe2, this would imply that the I out current is equal to the I reference current. And this is what I wanted to tell you. This is what I wanted to tell you. 
you have got the output current equal to the reference current which means if this is my one part of the circuit this is my other part of the circuit so the current in one part of the circuit is controlled by the current through it in another part of the circuit control word let it be for for now just forget about the control word for now say that the output current or the current in one part of the circuit is equal to the input current or the the other part of the circuit I am making that arrangement now. I am making the proper arrangement to make both the base emitter voltages same. So I have the, the basic assumption is this one that VB1 is equal to VB2. How to make them same? So I will connect them back to back and have a look how will I do? How will I do this? So let's say the arrangement. Let's say the arrangement. So how to do this? let's say this is my my what my second transistor right this is my second transistor and the first one is is this one the first one is this one so i've drawn this an inverted one right yes and and over here i also have this i reference current i also have this i reference current the source would be of course present what could be anything so this is one reference current and 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 this is my ic which is equal to i output so now basically i'm combining these two things and what do i have i join the base terminals of the two i join the base terminals of the two such that this is plus to minus vbe1 and this is plus to minus a vbe2 so have a look if if this is grounded if this is grounded if this is grounded so can I not do this I can do this this is a valid configuration how is this a valid configuration because if you apply the Kirchhoff's voltage law so for that you would have a VBE1 equal to VBE2 and this is what I say if VB1 is not equal to VB2 the Kirchhoff's voltage law would not be satisfied in this circuit and this would be an invalid circuit diagram that I've drawn is that fine till here it is and i also have to make this shorted i also have to short this now have a look now have a look what do you have this is the diagram for a basic uh, current mirror circuit this is the diagram for a basic current mirror circuit this one okay this figure represents what this figure represents the diagram for a basic uh, current mirror circuit where the output current would be equal to the input current and how is that so we have seen the concept behind it we've seen the theory behind it now let's say beta is not equal to infinity beta is large but it's not equal to infinity if beta is not equal to infinity so what would you have what would you have have a look ib would not be equal to zero right ib would not be equal to zero and if IB is not equal to zero, this would imply that the output current, this would not be equal to the reference current. Output current would not be equal to the reference current. Yes, yes, sir. So which means at a base current would flow over here. The IB current has to flow over here. Similarly, an IB current has to flow over here. This current, this would have to be collector current IC. So have a look. If IB is flowing here, IB is flowing here. So which means two times IB current is entering over here. Which means that I reference, I reference in this case would be uh, IC plus two times IB. I reference would be IC plus two times IB. Isn't it like this? It is and you could say what that i i b is what it's i c upon beta so you could say that this would be i c plus i c upon a beta isn't it like this and and if i take i c common plus two times plus two times plus two times so now if i take the i c common so this would be one plus two upon beta one plus two upon beta or you could say beta plus 2 upon beta or this could be IC upon beta into beta plus 2 upon beta so this is the relation that I reference would be what okay now again I, I, I reference would be what I reference has the equation this one I reference this would be equal to IC 
beta plus 2 upon beta. And, and you can see that IC is the output current. IC is the output current. The collector current for both has to be the same. This collector current, that collector current would be the same. We are not talking about the reference current at this point. I am talking about the collector current. So the collector current for both has to be the same. So IC, if this is this IC or that IC, both would be the same. This one of them is the output current. So which implies what? That I output. I output current is what? It's beta upon beta plus 2. Beta upon beta plus 2 into I reference. So this is the case. So this is the case when? When beta is not equal to infinity. This one is the case when beta is equal to infinity. So have a look. This is the basic design and the basic, uh, basic mathematical relation for a current mirror circuit for a current mirror circuit. Is that fine? It is. Now, what do you have? If, uh, let's suppose I talk about the basic uh, requirements of a current mirror circuit. So the basic requirements of a current mirror circuit would be what? Requirements of a current mirror circuit. So the first requirement is that the both transistors, have a look, we are using two transistors for a current mirror circuit, right? So the first requirement is that the both transistors must be in active mode of operation. And you know very well, very well what is the active mode of operation. The collector base is reverse bias and the emitter base is forward bias or whatever it is. So one is forward bias, the other is reverse bias and what is the active mode? The transistor would act as an amplifier. Right? Yes. The second, the second condition is what? That this should be identical and perfectly matched. Both transistors must be identical and perfectly matched and what do i mean by this so by this i mean the the base to emitter voltage so this means what that is that vbe1 would be equal to vbe2 let's say is equal to vbe similarly the base currents and the collector currents the base current and the collector currents also ib1 is equal to ib2 and this is let's say ib similarly ic1 is equal to ic2 is let's say ic and similarly beta1 is equal to beta2 which is large so which is if a finite value is given this relation if an infinite value is given you're not men should take infinite and take this this relation right yes the third condition the third condition is junction area of the emitter should be identical the third condition is junction area of emitter should be identical for both transistors which means what that area of the emitter junction emitter base junction AE2 should be equal to the area emitter base junction of AE1. AE1. Is that fine? It is. Now if this is not equal, if this is not equal, so what is the case? In that case you would have what AE is directly proportional to the reverse saturation current. Let me write over here. AE, the area of the emitter junction is directly proportional to I0 which is the reverse saturation current. Say that AE2 is twice of AE1. Say, say that AE2 is twice of AE1. So AE2 is twice of AE1. This means what? That I02 would be twice of I01. Isn't it? It is. So what would be the case? So now VBE2 and VE, VBE1 would not be equal. Have a look, have a look. Now what would be the case? VBE2, we, we said this one. Let me write it from here directly. Where is VBE2? Here. Here. So VBE2 is VT ln of uh, I out upon I not 2, let's say. Yes. Similarly, VBE1 is VT ln of I, I reference upon I not 1, right? Now if you put, uh, now if uh, you put VBE1 equal to VBE2, what would you have? I not up, uh, upon I2, 
I know I output upon I not two would be equal to I reference upon a I not one. Isn't this like this? Yes. And for I not two, you would have to put what? Two times I not one. Two times I not one. So this would imply what? That the output current would be equal to twice of a I reference. Twice of I reference. This is due to what? This is due to due to this that a e2 is twice of a e1 so have a look you have to take this into consideration also the area of the emitter junction by default if nothing is given if nothing is given in the questions the requirements are fulfilled you see this figure this is a basic current mirror circuit transistor must be in active mode they are must be identical and perfectly matched nothing is given all the assumptions are true junction of area uh, junction of the uh, junction area of the emitter junction should be what identical for both nothing is going to take it if not given the area is directly proportional to the reverse saturation current the higher the area the higher is the reverse saturation current for that and on, on, on the basis of that then you put the values in vbe1 and vbe2 and then equate them because VB1 should be equal to VB2 in order to, 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 to you know, uh, uh, what, satisfy the Kirchhoff voltage law in this loop. Is that fine? Yes. So I believe I finished this video over here. I said that it would be a longer video, but I say I, not, I do not want to make it long. I will just get into the next video and I will, we will talk about what sort of configurations, what sort of more configurations can we have for the current mirror circuit. This one is the basic circuit. One collector to base shorted and the basis of the two shorted again. This is output side, this is let's say the input side and, and, the base, and over here this is connected to the ground. You, know, you understand this figure, you have understand the concept behind the making of it. So you would know what am I talking about. So anyways, I finish this video over here. See you in the next one. Very soon inshallah. Till then take care of yourselves and everyone around you. Goodbye.